Hi there. If you are working on huge amount of data where you have to process hundreds of gigabytes of data or you have to analyze it, then I can definitely understand. It can be challenging and tedious work. However, what if I can tell you a way that you can analyze it very easily and not only that, you can also create KPIs, measures as well as you can implement the security in your model. Well, if you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video. Azure Analysis Services is a fully managed platform as a services that provides enterprise grade data models in the cloud. Use advanced mesh and modeling features to combine data from multiple data sources, define metrics, and secure your data in a single trusted WS semantic data model. The data model provides an easier and faster way for users to perform ad hoc data analysis using tools like Power BI in Excel. Not only that, you can also use any of your favorite data visualization tools to connect with Azure Analysis Services in order to analyze data. As you can see on your screen, you can ingest data into Azure Analysis Services from any of your cloud and on-premise data sources. Then you have your Azure Analysis Services where you would get enterprise-grade semantic data model. And at last, you can use any of your favorite data visualization tool to do your ad hoc data analysis. Remember that Azure Analysis Services is an in-memory database and also it's an analytic data processing engine in a cloud. Azure Analysis Services comes with a lot of features. You can get started quickly and you can scale efficiently. You can transform your complex data into one version of the single truth. That means you can build your data model using Azure Analysis Services and you can analyze hundreds of gigabytes of data very easily. You would get matched performance to the speed of your business. Additionally, you will get secured access anytime from anywhere. And it is very easy to govern, deploy, test, and deliver your BI solutions with confidence using Azure Analysis Services. You will get a lot of features. That means you can on demand scale up and down up to 400 GBs of memory. It is very easy to scale up and down with replicas. You can create up to eight replicas using Azure Analysis Services. If you are not using your Azure Analysis Service, you can also pause it. And once you are going to need it again, you can resume the service. With Azure Analysis Services, you will also get automation capabilities. And it comes with a lot of other features as well that you will get to know once you are going to start working with Azure Analysis Services or you can refer to Microsoft Documents as well. This is a typical workflow where we use Azure Analysis Services. We start from our left hand side where you can see we have the different storage solutions. Our data source can be anywhere. Then on the top of that, if we are working with Azure Services, we have the logic apps which are going to help you to get the data from other sources and to ingest the data into your blob storage. We can use on the top of that Azure Databricks to analyze that data and then we can push the data into your Azure SQL database or Azure blob storage or maybe Azure Data Warehouse solution. Remember that you can use Azure Data Factory or Azure Snips Analytics solutions to build your data warehouse. This is just a typical diagram. It's not hard and fast. According to your own requirements, you can manage it. Now, on the top of your data warehouse or your blob storage, you can use Azure Analysis Services. In that, you can ingest hundreds of gigabytes of data. And once your data is there, once you create your model over there, then you can use Power BI to visualize the data and you can share your reports and dashboards with the end users. Now, let's discuss about the use case of Azure Analysis Services. Azure Analysis Services is most commonly used for when you have a large data sets or you need a fast response time while you are doing your analysis on a huge amount of data set. Also, you can use Azure Analysis Services for your common data models. Now let's see what are the main features of Azure Analysis Services. If you are working on Power BI, then somehow directly or indirectly you are already using Azure Analysis Services because Power BI uses 
three different aspects. First of all, Power BI uses Power Query when it has to get the data from the different sources. That means when it has to perform extract, transform and loading of the data. The second part comes when it has to query caching or it has to do the data modeling or building relationships or applying the security and roles or maybe creating dynamic measures and analytic processing. So the main analytical processing engine where, where everything happens is the analysis service itself. So Azure analysis services and the analysis services underneath of Power BI is the same. And the last part comes where we visualize the data. And that part is just an interface where we create different visualizations. Even you have some custom visualizations as well that you want to perform. So overall, Azure Analysis Services is the core part of Microsoft Power BI. Now I'm sure you are thinking then what is the difference between the SQL Server Analysis Services and Azure Analysis Services? Well guys, actually Analysis Services is coming from the SQL Analysis Services itself. Microsoft SQL Server comes with different MSBI suits. That means you will get your SQL database, your SQL Server integration services, you will get analysis services, and then you get the reporting services. All these are on-premise solutions. However, Azure is a Microsoft Cloud service where we get the Azure analysis services. That means when we have to use the analysis services in cloud, then we will always use the Azure analysis services. Now on your screen, you can see a snapshot where I have demonstrated the corresponding services to SQL Server to Azure services. In case of Azure services, corresponding to SQL database, we have Azure SQL database, which is the same relational database. In terms of integration services, which we use to perform the ETL work, we have Azure Data Factory. In terms of analysis services, we have Azure analysis services, as I just mentioned. And we have SQL Server reporting services, which is an on-premise solution. Then corresponding to that, now we have the Power BI services, which is another cloud-based reporting service, or you can say self-service BI tool. Now there is a twist. In case of on-premise solutions provided by Microsoft for analysis services, we can do multi-dimensional data modeling as well as tabular data modeling. However, in case of Azure Analysis Services, multidimensional is not an option. We cannot do it. Multidimensional models will not be supported in Azure Analysis Services or Power BI Premium datasets. And do remember that one more thing. You should have minimum 1200 capability level in order to work with Azure Analysis Services. And always try to use the latest version of compatibility level. For this tutorial, we are going to use the compatibility level of 1500 and I'm going to show you during the demo that how we can use it. Now this is the time for demo. During the demo, we are going to create certain Azure services. That means a storage account as well as Azure Analysis Services Server. Then we are going to create our project into the Visual Studio, which I have already downloaded and it has been installed. If you haven't install the Microsoft Visual Studio, please do install it and also install the extension for analysis service. Then we are going to ingest the data over there. We are going to later deploy our model to Azure analysis services and then we are going to connect it with Power BI to analyze the data. So let's head over to my Azure analysis services portal. As you can see that right now I'm on my Azure portal. If you don't have your account, please do create one Azure account. You can create your account for free. You can use your personal or work email address to create your Azure account. If you are creating your account for the very first time, you will get free credits too that you can use to practice on Azure portal. Very first, we have to create a storage account and that storage account will be general purpose. That means we are going to create a blob storage account where we are going to upload some of our data. So either you can just click over here to storage account or just search over here for the storage account. As you can see that it's over here. Just click on this and here we are going to create a new one. You can read some of the text over here if you would like to. Otherwise, just click on this create button over here. So you have to fill up your information over here. That means your subscription, your resource group, etc. So let me do it quickly over here. 
Now it's going to run final validation. Once it's going to run, we can create our storage account. As you can see that it has been validated. Now we can create our storage account. As you can see over here, our storage account has been created. So we can directly go to the sources and we can pin it to dashboard as well. So let me pin it. And now let me go to my resources. Over here, this is my storage account name. We are going to need it. So please copy this one. Go to the containers and we have to create a new container so that we can upload our data set over here. As you can see that my container has been created successfully. So now let's go inside it. So now you have to go to the containers. Under containers, we have created one container with the name Netflix. So click over here. Now we can upload our data over here. Till now, we have just created our one storage account. Inside one storage account, we have created a container and over there we have uploaded our Netflix underscore title CSV file. In the next step, we are going to connect this container to the Power BI and let's see how to do it. In order to connect this container with Power BI, I'm going to need the storage account name. So let me go back over here. Let me copy this storage account name. And now let's go to Power BI. Over here, I can just simply go over here and I can get the data. I'm going to get the data from my Blob storage account because my storage account is a Blob storage account. This is my Azure Blob storage. Connect over here. We have to give the account name or URL. Just click on this OK button. And here it's asking you to give the account key. Now, how to get the account key? For that, you have to come back over here, come to the access keys, and over here you would get your account keys. You can click on this show button, copy this. Now go back over here and paste it and connect. Now here you can see that my folder is there. Basically, this is my container, Netflix. So I can select this and I can go to the transform data. And this is my file over here. You can simply click on this binary or you can just click on this combine. It's just going to load your data over here. And here it's showing you your all the data, its preview, and it's based on first 200 rows. And if you have already worked on Power BI, you know how does it work. If you have any question and concern, please don't forget to let me know. Here is your data. We have just get the data from our blob storage account where you can see I have source name which is my file name that I have placed into my Azure blob storage. Then rest is the data of the file. I just close and apply over there. Now it's going to get all the data from that particular file into your Power BI file. In case you want to visualize this data, you can do it easily over here. So this is just one example where we just got all the data that we have uploaded to our blob storage container and we connected Power BI to get the data. But our next part is to create one Azure analysis services in Azure portal. And then we have to create our data model. And then we are going to connect that Azure analysis services to the Power BI. So now we have to go back on our Azure portal where we have to create Azure Analysis Services. Now you can see that I'm back on my Azure portal. Here we can create Azure Analysis Services. So just type Analysis Service. Over here you can get this. Just click on this. And here we can create our Analysis Services. So click on this button. And here first you have to provide your server name. So that's going to be my server name. Secondly, you have to select your subscription and then your resource group. And my resource group is going to be BCP demo. Region you can select based on your location. Always try to select a location nearest to your data source. And then you can select the pricing tier. And after that, you have to select your pricing tier. For this demo, we are going to select the minimum one. However, based on your requirement, you can see the full pricing details after clicking on this button. 
for our demo we are going to select the minimum one which is b1 so let's select this one then this is going to be my administrator account which is connected via consultingpro.com so that's all you have to do if you like to configure your backup storage settings please do that over here but in this demo we really don't need it so we are not doing that additionally you can also configure your automation so you have to click on this button to configure your automation so now you know there are two additional options one is backup storage configuration that if that you can do over here and second is automation option so please configure them according to your requirements after that just click on this create button it's going to validate and then it can create Azure Analysis Services on Azure portal. Now our Azure Analysis Services has been created in Azure portal. We can directly go to the resources. And here you would find two options. One is server name, another is management server name. So management server name has the capability to read and write. So always try to use this one. So I'm going to copy this from here. That is going to be our Azure Analysis Services server name that we are going to use. So now we are going to head over to our Visual Studio where we have to create Azure Analysis Services tabular model. I have installed Visual Studio 2019. So please do install the latest version and don't forget to install the extension for Analysis Services. Click on this Create New Project. Over here, we have to select the analysis services. So for that, we need a Tableau model. And over here, I can see that analysis services Tableau project. So please click on this and click next. Here, you can give it a name. I'm going to give it a name. And then if you would like to change the location or any of the solution name, etc., you can do. Just click on create button after that. And here again, you have two options, integrated workspace and workspace server. So please do notice that workspace server is going to create solution on your on-premise or on your local machine. Integrated workspace is basically eliminates the need to provide an explicit Azure services server instance. So I'm going to create on this integrated workspace. Right now, you won't find any of the data over here because we haven't get any data into our Tableau model. So what you have to do, first of all go to the solution explorer and over here we have to mention our server name because whenever you are going to deploy it on azure analysis services you need a server name that we just copied from azure analysis services portal or here you would go to the properties and here you have to mention your server name right now it's localhost so we are going to mention this one and click ok now come to the tabular model and here we have to get the data. So you can see this data sources. So right click on this and import data from a data source. It's going to be the same as your Power Query experience. So please click on this. And I don't need this source column name so I can remove this. So this is going to be my data. After that, you just need to click on this import button. And here you can see that we have successfully import our data. So click on this close button. And there is your data. If you have multiple tables as well, you can do that too. You can easily get the data from any of your data source in Azure Analysis Services tabular model. But please do remember that creating a tabular model over here or creating on premise, it's going to be the same experience. The only thing that really matters is where we are going to deploy this. In case of on-premise solution, we deploy it on on-premise server. However, in this case of Azure Analysis Services, we are going to deploy this on Azure Analysis Services server. Now, as you can see, we have our, all the data over here. In case you would like to create the relationships and you have multiple tables, so please click on this diagram button, which is at the bottom of your screen on your right hand side. And there you would find multiple tables so you can create the relationships among them and now next part would be to come again back to the table and here you can create certain kpis if you would like to for example in our case i want to create a measure in azure analysis services you create the measures at the bottom of your screen over here which is a grayed out area and how to create it let's say over here on the top formula bar you can see so here you have to create your measure so first let's give it a name total ids and here we have to write our dax if you don't know anything about dax 
So please watch our next tutorial, which is a complete text tutorial and you would get everything about it. Real time scenarios, problems, challenges, everything you're going to get into there. So I'm going to say rows count and then my table name, which is going to be my Netflix. And here you can see that you have created your first measure, which is going to give you the total IDs. Similar to that, if you want to create any other measure, you can definitely create over here. I'm not going to create a lot of measures because if you want to know how to create a measure using DAX, then you can refer our DAX tutorial and link you can find in the description section. So please watch that video to learn more about DAX and how to create the measure. The next part would be to create a role. So in order to create a role, what you can do, you would come over here on your right hand side panel. That is your tabular model explorer. Over here, you will find your tables and other information. Or one of them is your rows. So right click on this and create a role. This role is for the security purpose. We implement role level security in Power BI the similar way we can implement over here. First, we have to create a role. Then we have to assign a table to that role. And then we have to add the users into that particular role. So let's create over here. So first, you have to give your role name. So I'm going to say country because this role is going to be for country specific and then if you want to give the permission you can handle it over here now the next part would be to add the members over here so you can find the users you can add it directly or you can add any external user or in case you have already added and you want to remove it you can do it there so let's try to find the users over here first i have to log in into my account and now let's search Merida. And here I have this account Merida at BIConsultingPro.com. I'm going to edit. Here you can see that I have added it over here. Similarly, you can edit if you would like to. And then you can click OK. The next part would be on which table I want to apply this role or where I want to apply the security. So here I have this table Netflix. So I'm of course going to do this. One more thing, when you create a role, there is the permissions as well. So you have to select what kind of permission you want to give. Read, read and process, process or administration. So we are only going to give the read permission. Without that, this is not going to be highlighted. So now we can select our table, this one. We are going to apply on this table. So let's go to the filter. Now you have to add the filter. And where I'm going to say country should not be United States. So for this role, I have applied a DEX filter where country should not equal to United States. That means this role cannot see any of the value where country equals to United States. So click on OK. And here I have created this role. So you can see that I have created a role country under country. I have this user. And if you are going to right click and edit the role, you would find all other descriptions where I have mentioned the country should not be equal to United States. That means whenever Merida is going to view the data, she won't be able to view the data for United States. That's what you have to do. Just click on OK. And here, now we have created the role. We have created the table. We have created the measures. And if you would like to create any of the KPIs, you can create over here. So, so far, what we have done, we have created one container. Then in the container, we have uploaded certain data. That means Netflix titles data over there. After that, we have created a service for Azure services in Azure portal. Then we copied certain details from there. That means the management server name. And then we open the Visual Studio on my desktop. And over there, we, are, we have created one tabular model. And in the tabular model, we are getting the data from the Blob Storage account. After getting the data, we have created our measure over here. Then we have also created a role to show that how we can apply the security in Azure services. Now, next step would be to deploy this model. And as I showed you earlier, we would go to the properties and here we have to mention or paste our server name. So that we have done already. Now we can build our solution and we can deploy it. So first build it. And here you can see at the bottom, it has been built, succeeded with no errors. Now we can deploy it. So here you would click on this deploy button. It's going to deploy this on Azure services. It's going to deploy this on Azure Analysis Services Portal. So click over here. You have to sign in into your account and please do read this information before proceeding further. And here you can see the window where it's deploying this model to, to Azure Analysis Services Portal. 
And here you can see that metadata has been deployed. Now it's deploying the data as well. And it's been done. It has transferred 7,789 rows. So close it. Now what we are going to do, we are going to connect Power BI to the Azure Analysis Services to view this data model. Let's get data on Analysis Services. Now let's paste this. And here you would see that if you are directly connecting with Analysis Services, you would get this option of Connect Live. That's how Microsoft connect with any of the analysis services. Now you can just simply connect live. Here you have to select your data model, the solution that you have built, and you have to select your model over here and just click OK. If you have built multiple solutions, then you would get all the options over there. Now you can see that all the fields are over here. This is going to be our KPI, so I can just convert it to a card. And on the top of that, if I want to visualize any of the data, I can do it over here. It's totally up to you what kind of visualizations you want to build it over here. But our main purpose for this tutorial was to show you how you can use Azure Analysis Services, how you can create a Tableau data model and how you can utilize it. So guys, that's it for this tutorial. In this tutorial, what we have done, we have stored our data into Azure Blob Storage Container. From there, we got the data to our Visual Studio where we have created our Tableau model. Then we have deployed our Analysis Services Tableau model to Azure Services. And from there, we connected that Azure Analysis Services Tableau model to Power BI to visualize the data. I hope now you have clear understanding about Azure Analysis Services with the help of which you can analyze hundreds of gigabytes of data. If you have any question or concern, please do let me know. Also, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates. See you in the next video.